everyone and welcome to this August bullet journal plan with me video. August always feels like this weird transitional month from summer to fall to me. So I wanted to include some late summery colors in today's theme as well as some of these minimal textured elements. And overall, this ended up being one of my personal favorite themes in a while. So I hope you'll enjoy too. But without further introductions, let's get started with the cover spread that we'll combine with the monthly calendar. We're using these three papers in today's video that I created on Photoshop. I'll add this trio to the free section of my shop. So if you want to use the same papers, you'll find a link to download them in the description. But before we get to actually using them, let's first create the small painting on the cover spread that will draw most of the attention. I was actually using a piece of my current notebook paper. I'm using the Mellow Days watercolor bullet journal and I had some extra pieces from the Dutch door pages we did last month. I always keep those extra pieces of paper for opportunities like this when we can layer them on top of something else. So we are using gouache paints today and I'll write all the colors I'm using to this screen so that it's easier to follow along. But we only have a few colors here that can also be replaced with any similar tones you have at home. We are starting with the background of this painting that will just get this light grayish blue wash of color. So I added a little bit of blue and black to the white mixture, but this first color ended up being way darker against the white background than I thought. This just shows that you really need the tiniest bit of color if you want to create a barely there light wash of color. So I went over the area with more white to lighten things up. I was a little bit nervous that the paper wouldn't handle this many layers, but it held up surprisingly well and I didn't have any problems with it. But after we've let the background completely dry, it's time to jump to the fun part, which is the leaves and flowers. I started with this dark brown orange shade that we are just tapping to the places where the flowers will eventually be. We're going to continue layering lighter shades on the flowers. So this will just be the deepest shadow color under the others. I would advise still leaving some empty spaces and gaps between some of the dots so that we don't cover too big of an area with this dark shade. Then I thought it would be easier to kind of visualize the whole picture if we painted the leaves next before finishing the flowers. So I mixed this very dark green shade that I got by adding some black and blue to my forest green shade. And then we'll just start to paint these larger and thinner leaves all across the paper. I sketched some of these main shapes out with a pencil a little bit, which might help if you don't like painting without a guide underneath. And after the biggest leaves, I switched to a smaller detailing brush that will help to keep the leaf shapes sharper and also paint the stems. We are basically only using two green tones in the leaves, so I switched to this grayish, lighter green and added some more leaves with it. I also added some of these around the flowers and also some lines to the darker leaves with this shade, which will all just add a little bit more detail to this whole painting. But then all we have left is to finish the flowers and add some final details. So I mix some even lighter tones of yellow and peach shades and just started to tap those over the flower areas. Later, I also took a pure white shade and added some of that to brighten up the picture even more. Thank you. 
In the end, this is a super easy gouache painting, only using a few colors as you saw, but I think it still looks really pretty. So I highly encourage you to try something like this at home, even if you don't have that much experience with painting it. But yeah, now that we have the centerpiece ready for the cover spread, we're gonna start layering all these different papers together. Layering was kind of the key to this whole monthly theme. I was really inspired by these different textures and colors together and had so much fun coming up with different layouts for the pages. So I chose to wrote this big, bulky August title above the painting and I'll write the font name I used to this screen. We're actually going to use the same font throughout the whole theme because I think these bold black letters added such a nice contrast to the other elements and the font itself almost ended up being one of the key factors in this whole theme. I sketched out all the titles in this video with a pencil beforehand. I think it's just much easier to keep the letters even like that and you won't run into any issues of not having enough room for the title. But anyway, after that, it's time to glue all the different pieces to the page. I ended up using this one text washi tape that's from my own shop. This is one of my personal favorite washi tapes. It's so versatile and works perfectly to add a minimal accent to a theme like this. But if you don't have this washi tape, any other text scribble or even a grid tape would add a very similar effect. Or you can always just leave this detail out or do your own text scribble by hand. Anyway, we're gonna do the bigger monthly calendar to the left page here. And for that, I used a bigger piece of this lined paper. If you have a notebook with lined paper like this, you could definitely just use that. I just don't happen to own any, which is why I had to draw this from scratch. But anyway, I decided to paint this one singular leaf branch under the calendar to balance the colors on these two pages. It was surprisingly easy to paint on this paper. I printed all these colors on regular white sticker paper, but the amazing thing about gouache is that you'll able to paint on almost any paper with it because it doesn't require much water or blending. But anyway, I finished the calendar with these bold letters again and then painted these circles to write the dates on. There isn't much room here to write, so if you use your monthly calendar a lot, it might be a good idea to make it slightly larger. But I usually have only a few things I write on it, so I think I should be fine. But after that, the last thing I added to the cover spread was this small color palette thing that really brought everything together. I used the square stickers from my shop, but you could just cut squares from printed colors or craft paper. And that finally finishes the whole cover spread. I think this might be one of my personal favorite covers of all time. I really liked how it all came together. It was one of those rare occasions when it ended up looking exactly as I envisioned in my mind, which I was very happy about. And if you like this too, but are too busy to create it yourself, this theme will be available on my shop and Patreon as a digital download version as always. The summer collection products in my shop are also still available till the end of August, but some of the limited products like the collection boxes and washi tapes don't have many left. So if you've been eyeing those products, be sure to get them before they run out. But that's it for my shop ad for the month. And now let's continue to the next spread. We'll set up a monthly planning spread next that I use to set a focus, make some sort of overall plan and list all the most important things that need to get done this month. We'll start again with this textured stone paper on the sides and then I wanted to create this tall box with the lined paper here on the left side. 
However, first we'll need to create the layers to the background again, and we'll start with another one of these very basic leaf paintings. My gouache paints had already dried at this point, but you can reactivate them pretty easily by adding just a few drops of water to them. So I used the same colors and brushes as we did earlier and just painted this very simple leaf to the bottom and then a little bit bigger one with some flowers towards the top of the page. This bottom leaf will mostly be covered with the box, so we can just barely see some of these leaves at the end, but this bigger flower will be more of an attention piece on this spread. Again, I did some layering for the flowers, so I started by tapping on these darker orange shades and then went over it with the lighter shades that matched the light peach paper we've used on this theme. Lastly, I also added this light blue to create a few bigger circles because I didn't have a colored pen in this exact color. But after that, it's time to start filling the actual planning content of these pages. So I wanted to use this tall box for my ideal daily routine. This is something I add to my planning pages on a regular basis because I'm still trying to find and improve a routine that works well for me. I've kind of been into the four chronotypes and trying to apply that philosophy to my daily rhythm. And if you don't know about that, it's basically categorizing people into these four types based on your ideal sleeping habits and kind of like your body's natural energy and what time of the day your brain is the most active. So I'll probably try to change some of my daily routine to match better with my natural energy and see how it goes. I'll leave a link to the description in case you want to read about this more. But anyway, then I'll just list the three most important things I want to get done in August and then we'll start the second page with this big planning title and a few lines to set a monthly focus. If you're like me and your brain doesn't want to stick to one thing at a time, I think these focus sections are so helpful because it forces you to narrow down only to a few specific things you want to prioritize in a certain month. And then you can always come back to this page later and remind yourself of those things. Before we move on though, I felt like the bottom corner here needed a little bit more color. So I took out this tiny piece of my notebook paper again, and we're gonna paint a cute small painting here. This time I started with this peachy color on the background, and again had to lighten it up after applying this first layer. Sometimes gouache paints try a little bit darker than the initial shade and I wanted this color to match the peachy paper color on the pages as much as possible, so I had to add some white in again. However, this time after the background had dried, we're starting by painting a vase for this flower bouquet of sorts. I used the same colors and style again, but kept the leaves and flowers a little bit smaller this time to get this very delicate appearance. I started with the darker colors again for both the leaves and flowers, and then followed those up with the lighter colors.
added some white dots all over the painting as the final touch and then we can just remove the tapes and glue this painting to the page. Again, I layered this with some paper and washi tapes and then all we have left on this page is this small space next to the painting. I decided to use this for a weekly overview plan. There isn't much room here, but I think I can squeeze in just a few things I want to get done in each of the weeks in August. But that's it for the planning spread. I think this came together pretty nicely as well. And next we can move on to the weekly setup. We'll start here by cutting a small part of the next two pages to create this slight Dutch door effect. I always like to round the corners of my Dutch door pages because it makes them look so much more put together somehow. I got this corner rounding tool just from Amazon and there are many different ones like this. But then we'll start the layout of this page by cutting a few different shapes from the papers we've used so far. I don't have a real circle drawing tool, so I always just use cups or any other random round objects to draw circle shapes. And if you think this layout looks familiar, it's actually going to be almost exactly the same as what I used in my 2023 yearly goals layout at the start of this year. I really liked that layout and felt like it would work perfectly for a weekly setup too, with just some small modifications. But after we are done attaching all the bigger shapes, it's time to start going over the first page. So I started with a small calendar that I like to have on my weekly pages. It's just easier to visualize the month for me and see where we're going. And then we'll write some bold titles again. I decided to use this lined section just for some random notes I might have throughout the month. I don't always end up using these sections, but I think it's still good to have some space in your journal for any stuff that doesn't really belong anywhere else. But after that, we're gonna paint a bigger flower in the bottom corner again. This is going to be pretty similar to the flower we painted on the previous page, just a little bit larger. I think the flower style changed a little bit from the first painting we did, but I didn't mind that too much. These were very easy to paint and only require a few colors, so I think they worked as a great addition to this theme. But after finishing the page with a small color palette again, we can move on to set up the first week in August. I actually tried out something a little bit different with the weekly layout this time. So I've sometimes made these weekly master to do lists from where I can just pick any task for any day. But this time I tried to divide the tasks a little bit further by the time. So 8 to 12 would indicate the morning tasks, 12 to 18 are the afternoon tasks, and 18 to 21 are the evening tasks. So I'll again try to consider the difficulty and level of consideration or creativity required for the tasks throughout my week and try to tie that with the chronotype stuff and we'll see how that goes. 
I also left this small space to write something for each day, which can just be any appointments or deadlines I'll need to remember. There isn't much space here, so I hope that is enough. <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to use this weekly layout for the whole month or if I want to go back to something more familiar. So I didn't set up these next few weeks yet and instead we'll jump to the last page of this layout, which will be for the last transition week from August to September. I wanted to do something a little bit different here just to match the decorations. So I made this tasks box at the top of the page and then left some room again for any short daily notes. I'll use one page per week for the rest of the weeks in August. If you feel like you need more space, you can always double the amount of pages here in the middle and use one full spread for each week. However, this finishes up the week section this time and now all we have left is to set up the final spread for the month, which will be the monthly reflection. I wanted to create one more fully covered page with this stone texture paper. So that's what we're going to start here with. If you've also been bullet journaling for a while, sometimes it's just nice to get rid of the dark grid. I think it just doesn't fit certain aesthetics, if you know what I mean. And the lined paper just has a slightly different look to it. Anyway, before adding the lined boxes, we'll again paint some really quick dark leaves under the corners here. I think these types of leaves would suit many other themes as well, and they add just the perfect amount of contrast without taking too much time to paint at all. But after that, we're going to glue all the papers to the page and write a few last titles of this theme. I'm not gonna lie, I was so done writing these bold letters at this point. It is pretty tedious and takes a lot of time because you have to be so precise with them, but I think the final result was definitely worth it. As I said in the beginning, these titles were kind of a big decoration element of this whole theme. And what I love about it is that you don't always need to draw or paint something to create cute themes for your journal. Just playing around with a few colors and titles is all you need to create beautiful pages. But anyway, I usually include pretty similar things to these reflection pages. So I started with this what's on my mind section where I can write whatever it is that I'm processing at the moment. I'll fill this page at the very end of August and the purpose is just to collect my thoughts from the previous month, reflect on what worked and what didn't and get ready to move on to the next month. I like to include some gratitude sections whenever I have room for it and I feel like it's one of those things that will immediately make you feel better about your life and get you into a better mood by thinking about everything you can be grateful for. Then lastly, I like to include this scale thing where I can review the whole past month on these different categories. I think it's a pretty effective way to get the overall image of the month and you're able to compare these results with other months very easily too. And then we just have these two small sections for the ups and downs, so things I was proud of and the things I need to improve moving forward. But after we're done with these last titles, we're finally done with this minimalist August theme. As I said earlier, I think this is one of my favorite themes in a while. It was pretty simple to create too. All the paintings and flowers are something you can create in a very short amount of time. So I hope this gives you lots of ideas for the late summer and early fall themes. If this was your first time on the channel and you'd like to stay tuned for more art and journaling, definitely consider subscribing. But I guess that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.